You know that traditional Thanksgiving dish, the one with the yams and the marshmallows and the brown sugar? Well, those yams aren't actually yams. They're sweet potatoes. Real yams are fairly difficult to come by in the United States. But at some point, some grocery stores started calling certain kinds of sweet potatoes yams and others sweet potatoes. There are a lot of different varieties. It can be confusing, but there is nothing confusing about the delicious taste of sweet potatoes. I'm Charity Nebbe. On this episode of Iowa Ingredient, we'll meet an Iowa farmer who grows sweet potatoes in a scenic part of the state. And Chef Walter Janke from the Northside Cafe in Winterset will join us in the kitchen to cook with sweet potatoes, including a non-traditional and divine sweet potato creme brulee. All that and more coming up next on Iowa Ingredient. Funding for Iowa Ingredient has been provided by a grant from the W.T. and Edna M. Dahl Trust, Chef Lisa Laval of Trellis Cafe and Chef Michael Laval of the Des Moines Embassy Club. For more than 100 years, the Des Moines Embassy Club has provided a place to dine, celebrate, and do business. Located in downtown Des Moines and in West Des Moines, details are at embassyclub.com. Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation. One hundred million tons of sweet potatoes are grown in China every year. They are the world's leading producer of sweet potatoes. Here in the United States, we grow about a million tons. And there are many different varieties of sweet potatoes. The one most of us are familiar with is the orange fleshed variety. It's chock-a-block with beta carotene and antioxidants. And the best thing is that it's versatile. It can be the star of sweet or savory dishes. And happily, many different varieties grow well in Iowa. They love the heat and they love our rich soil. Hidden just beneath this rich, dense soil, you'll find sweet potatoes. It's late September and farmer Jordan Scheibel is carefully harvesting his not-so-small crop of these sweet-tasting root vegetables. This is a good plant. That's for like two pounds sweet potatoes. <laughs> Jordan owns and operates Middle Way Farm. This New England native moved to the Midwest to attend Grinnell College. Finding a love in small-scale farming, he eventually found some land and became a business owner and vegetable farmer. Today, he sells a wide variety of produce to the local farmer's market and a number of CSAs. There's a number of things about farming that really resonate with me. I really like producing a tangible product that I deliver to people and that they are actually eating and being sustained by. You know, I'm not just you know giving someone vegetables and then they're just you know, eating them. It's like they're eating them and they're really finding joy in the food, which I think is the, the best argument for local food that I can think of is that this is food that you will actually enjoy more. You will enjoy eating more. Sweet potatoes are synonymous with cold weather comfort food. As with winter squash, fall harvest is the time you start seeing sweet potatoes in recipe blogs and on farmer's market stands. However, it might surprise you to discover that sweet potatoes are actually native to the tropical areas of Central and South America. They thrive in hot weather, and the greatest danger to the plant is, oddly enough, cold. 
They do really like hot weather. I want to get them out of the ground, definitely before we have a frost. If we get a frost and that hits the plants, the damage from that frost can actually go into the tuber and cause them to taste bitter and to lose storage life. Growing your own sweet potatoes may take a few additional steps compared to your other garden vegetables, but with some time and patience, Jordan shows they can grow quite well in Iowa. This is the perfect potato. <laughs> it's like the perfect size. You can't plant sweet potatoes until the air temperatures and the soil temperatures have warmed up quite a bit. So typically it's like the first or second week of June. So it's usually the last thing that I'm planting. You have to select varieties that are shorter day. So I grow a Beauregard, which is a 90 day variety. And that means that from planting to harvest is 90 days. The vines will grow, you know, five to 10 feet long. Um, so they really will spread out. And then the other thing is that once they come out of the ground, they have to cure for seven to 10 days. They actually are very bland right out of the ground. They have no sweetness. And so that curing period is important for the skins to heal and then also for them to develop some sweetness. They will actually keep in storage for quite a long time. I actually saw someone with a sweet potato that was a year old. Um, but that's kind of the idea is that they get harvested in late September and then they get marketed October, November, December. There's sometimes you get these jumbos, like this isn't really a jumbo, but it's a fairly large sweet potato. Sweet potatoes are an interesting vegetable. Not too often can you find a tropical plant that can survive the extremes of Iowa's climate. But thanks to the hard work of vegetable farmers like Jordan, we're able to enjoy this sweet local treat long into the winter months. The community of Winterset has a lot going for it. It's the birthplace of the Hollywood icon John Wayne, the home of the bridges of Madison County, and it's the perfect weekend getaway to visit wineries and museums. With any destination, finding a place to eat is paramount. Thanks to the talents of Chef Walter Jenke, visitors to Winterset have a place to dine and enjoy great food in the form of the historic Northside Cafe. At the beginning of last year, we were recognized uh, and placed on the National Historic Register. The courthouse had just finished an extensive renovation, so the square itself looks great. We have a community that's really engaged in preserving this downtown and wants it to be an attractive place for people to come and see. So that's, that's been a big help to us. You know, last year, the, the John Wayne Museum expanded and opened their expansion and got a, recognized for the quality of that. There's a quilt museum in town now, and we still draw visitors from the movie, The Bridges of Madison County, even though that's over two decades ago. That still is just a, a really popular attraction. So. All those things have really kept this community quite engaged. Each year, we want to see the cafe continue to improve in its operation, whether it's finding that signature item or something new, or just streamlining what we're already doing to make it more efficient. Always trying to find the best staff we can and listening to customer suggestions and just fine tuning this place. My goal personally would be that we continue to run this in such a way that it can become a regional destination. People from as far away as possible could find it and enjoy it. And if we want to reach the point of a regional destination, you don't do it by just cranking open a box of stuff that every other place has and throwing it in the fryer. So as many things as possible, we like to do from scratch and we like to tweak and find some way to make it uniquely ours. That's the nice thing about cooking. If, if you can experiment a lot, and if it doesn't work, you just move on. And we are here in the kitchen with Chef Walter Jenke. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much for inviting me. And we are cooking with sweet potatoes today. What are we making? We are making sweet potato quesadillas. Awesome. I know it sounds unusual, and I actually like this dish a lot because it kind of 
This is the main ingredient for us today, but you wouldn't necessarily know it's there. It kind of shows the versatility of this and something people wouldn't normally choose to put it in. I, I like just a baked sweet potato, and I'm happy with that. So I, I don't normally do a lot of other stuff with it, but I think people will really enjoy this dish. All right, um, and your family devoured them, right? This is we devour them. Once we're done with the filling, you might find yourself eating it with chips before you're done. Or if you want it for another time, roll it up in a burrito or something. Oh, nice. But we're just going to go with the quesadillas because it assembles fast and easy. All right, and we already got the uh, the onions and the garlic going over here. And they're pretty much ready. Right, I think they're close so. enough. We can go right to mashing the sweet potatoes. Okay. That will be the next ingredient we add. And these have been baked and cooled. Right. Um, they're baked and already cooled and easy to handle. Uh, that's a preferred method for this dish. And then it's really simple. You can just break it open and you can squeeze that right out of there. Ooh, and you have fun. your sweet potatoes. You don't necessarily need the skin in there. So we'll set that aside. And we'll just break all these open and add them in. It's like toothpaste. It is like <laughs> toothpaste. But more delicious. But more delicious. You can actually swallow this. So we'll give it a mash. And you could do this in the pot if you were versatile with that sort of thing, but this just makes it easier to stir stuff together. All right. So if you're ready, we'll drop this right in there. Sure. Okay. And this dish makes great leftovers as well. I mean, not makes great leftovers, it does do that, but <laughs> if you ever eat lentils, Put them in the fridge next day. If you have leftover potatoes, you can throw all this in a pot. Awesome. And stir it all together. Now, the pecans add a nice texture to it. It's basically a vegetarian dish. There's not gonna be any meat in it. And so, all these flavors combine. You won't necessarily taste a nutty flavor to this, but it just gives it a little bit of texture when you're eating it. And of course, you could, I'm getting the impression you could put Whatever you wanted yep, in there. Yep, you you could go throw. all Iowa and throw black walnuts in. You <laughs> could just use English walnuts. Or even, you could yeah. use a Pork. lot of different things. <laughs> I've never tried almonds. I'm not sure I'd go that far, but that's what I love about cooking. There are so many creative ideas. You really, it, it's, it's a great opportunity to grow and think of new things. All right. It smells amazing. It, it may not be beautiful, good. but it, it, it smells is, it fantastic. Smells great. Yeah. What we're gonna do last is add the uh, salsa here. And to spice it up, a little chipotle peppers. We'll just let that simmer. All right, the filling is all ready. You've got a quesadilla in here. You put a little butter in there. We've toasted it on both sides now. That's right. Now we'll just add the cheese to get it uh, a little melted. And with our hot filling, these assemble pretty quick. If you had an army of kids waiting for dinner, with everything hot, you really, it doesn't take long to throw this together. So as much cheese as you like, I think that's good. And then you can spoon in. All right, do you want to wait till it's melty or? I think with the hot okay. filling, we'll be okay. Uh, and then just kind of smush it out a little. And we don't have to cover the whole thing. We're going to fold it. Okay. So you can just do it on half. If the filling wasn't hot, I'd smear it over further so that it's thinner and would get hot faster. Okay. But in this case, I think that we can just, good? I think that looks good. Then we can crank these out fast. If you're an aficionado who needs to have that totally bubbly melted, that is completely an option. But. Take this right over here. Now we can just slice it. All right. We'll go with thirds. Nice bite size, easy to pick up pieces. Now we can take some of our lettuce. De gallo. A little pico to freshen up this sweet potato. Did you ever think you'd see a day where sweet potato would have salsa? <laughs> no, but I think it's a really good idea. Mm. All right, that's beautiful. It is beautiful. I'm gonna try some right now. All right. Wow. That is awesome. 
All right. Fabulous. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We've had our sweet potato quesadillas, and now it's time for dessert. What are we making? Right. We're making one of my favorite desserts to do. It's another thing that's kind of elegant, but surprisingly simple once you've seen how to do it. So I'm going to show you what to do. It's called creme brulee, but we're going to call it sweet potato creme brulee. Oh, this sounds good. So we still have some mashed sweet potatoes from earlier. We're going to use those in this. The first thing we have to do is heat up some of these ingredients. If you want to pour the heavy cream, the sugars, the nutmeg and vanilla and cinnamon all in that pot and we'll get it simmering, uh -huh. not a heavy boil. I pour a little cream in the eggs, these are yolks and then just a couple of whole eggs because we're going to add the hot liquid but we're not trying to make scrambled eggs. All right. And why did you add the cream now? I added a little now because it gives, with a little moisture in here with the eggs, it's just mm -hmm. my insurance in case you're going to pour and you pour really fast and we have a problem the extra cream in here will kind of help absorb some all of that right. heat. And that? Yep, all this. All Take of it, it all. Right. And it already smells amazing. Yes, it does. <laughs> All right, this looks that good looks, to you. That looks great. Now, that's nice and hot, and like I say, we're not trying to make scrambled eggs for breakfast, so right. I will take the whisk, and I'm gonna scramble up our yolks and eggs and cream, get it all mixed together, and then you will just drizzle a little of the hot end slowly while I stir. Okay. All right, so you can start now, and I'll just keep moving this around. We've probably got more than half of that in here. You could stop and I'll okay. dump the rest right into the pot. All right. I will add the sweet potatoes. Don't want to forget our lovely ingredient. <laughs> and we'll kind of use this to get them out. And, All right, and do we heat it up again or just mix it up? We'll just kind of mix it up together. All right, and it doesn't need to be on the heat for that? It does not need to be cooked now, but we'll want to kind of mash those in as much as we can and break it up. And then the final step is going to be the Here, strainer. I'll let you do that and I'll get the strainer. And what the strainer does, here we go, is sweet potatoes tend to sometimes be a little stringy. All right. So. But you want a nice, we don't smooth want any stringiness. creme brulee. Right. If you just had family over and you just wanted to kind of have a quick creme brulee for the kids. <laughs> then you can probably get away with it. But mm -hmm. since there is a method for dealing with it, we're going to just pour this right in here. That'll push all that through there. The other thing that helps these bake properly is something called a water bath. Ideally, it would be nice if the water is equal to the liquid in the bowls, but I also watch the height on the pan because I don't want it to spill everywhere, so. All right, we've baked that for 30 minutes at 350 degrees. We cooled it down, and now the fun right, part, right? Now, this is, I tell people who come to work with me at the cafe, this is one of the reasons you become a chef. You get to play with fire and you get to play with food. All the things your mom said maybe you should not do, not do right. suddenly. So you're just spreading sugar okay, out yeah. over then the Then I'll, I'll shake it a little bit. The more even it is prevents you from having some darker spots. Mm -hmm. But it's called creme brulee. It kind of means burned. So there will be some brown spots on All there. Right. So now the fun part. You ready for this? Perfect. 
There we go. All right. Now, set it on the plate. And I've got spoons. Well, then I think we <laughs> should see how this turned out. All what right. do you think? Yes, nice, so, nice. Yep, nice little crust crispy on crust. It. Cut right in there. Okay, slow down now. <laughs> All right, you ready? Uh huh. Mm. Oh, wow. I think it turned out. So good. <laughs> Chef Walter, thank you so much. Thank you, I really enjoyed it. I have two passions, education and cooking. And I really want to put these two together for the community. Cut those into a body, yeah. Kumar Vikrama Singha oh started the Elliott Test Kitchen in Fort Madison because he wanted kids to have a place to go for extra help after school. Kumar comes from Sri Lanka, a country that deeply values education. Okay, so what I want the two of you to do is like a pick the tomato. I want you to pick the basil. So get all the red ones, all the tomatoes. My goal is after school, I want any kids who need help with any kind of schoolwork, math, science, I want them to come here. But at the same time, I have teachers come here. So I bring them both of them in here, and I use the food as a binding agent, practically a bait to get them in here. In exchange for their time, teachers who volunteer get to enjoy a delicious meal prepared by the students. Cold water, ladies and gentlemen. A former chef, okay. Kumar yes. enjoys teaching the kids how to prepare and appreciate healthy meals and hanging, snacks. The kids who's going to help me cook is, are the ones who do not have any homework or who get their homework done fast or who really likes to cook. So the main goal is if you come here, you have a lot of homework you need to be doing and uh, you are more than welcome to sit and get your homework done because education is the number one priority here. Put, put a little bit more to the top. There we go, perfect. We're going to be cooking uh, fried strawberries as a dessert, but then also we'll be making PLT pasta salad, which we're going to be using fresh tomatoes right out of our backyard. In the morning, I go around all the grocery stores local, and I found the uh, best deal and what's the freshest and what kids going to like. That excites me to tell the kids, hey, I'm keep feeding all of you, and this is how much it costs, but look how good it is. There you go, man. Put half and half into each one. In math, I like had a B plus, and then I got up to like the A plus, which is like a big difference for me. I really like doing desserts because it's kind of like an art to me, like the way you can like move the whooping cream in like a certain direction and like the drizzling of the chocolate. It's kind of cool to see like me make something and then have people eat something that I actually made. When the homework is done and the food is ready, it's time to eat. The teachers take time to celebrate successes and everyone sits together as a family. All right, kids, come on in. Okay. We come from a low socioeconomic status area. When you have people that are invested in young people, that's what can make all the difference in their lives. You see that with some of the kids that Kumar has taken on that um, help him cook. I mean, these kids just blossom in front of your eyes. They have talents and abilities that nobody knew that they had. A lot of our kids don't even sit down at a table and eat at, at night. And so they have a place where they can sit, they can learn you know, what proper table etiquette is, what it is like to have conversations with adults and things like that. So it hits so many different social skills, employability skills, educational skills that they're gonna need for the rest of their life. Following the meal, Kumar has a second group of students preparing for the ACT college admissions test. This is considered one of my greatest accomplishments at this place. My goal was to get 15 kids, and we are right now at 25 kids. It might be even 27 kids. So it's very humbling to see this need and that people taking advantage of it. The test kitchen is Kumar's way of giving back to the community that helped him when he first arrived. And he doesn't want it to stop here. I wanted these kind of things popping up every single small town in Iowa. And that's my dream.
That's it for this episode. Thank you for learning about Iowa's culinary culture with us. I'm Charity Nebbe. See you next time for more food discoveries on Iowa Ingredient. As you can probably guess, the Iowa Ingredient staff appreciates everything about the food scene in Iowa. And in 2016 and early 2017, we visited the restaurants, farms, and other locations showcased on this program. But circumstances can change, so we encourage you to check ahead if you're planning a visit of your own. We hope you get the chance to get out there and enjoy Iowa's fabulous food experiences for yourself. Funding for Iowa Ingredient has been provided by a grant from the W.T. and Edna M. Dahl Trust, Chef Lisa Laval of Trellis Cafe and Chef Michael Laval of the Des Moines Embassy Club. For more than 100 years, the Des Moines Embassy Club has provided a place to dine, celebrate, and do business. Located in downtown Des Moines and in West Des Moines, details are at embassyclub.com. Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation.